there were three personalities who had played a vital role in making sure that no stone is left unturned in adding to the already existing problems for the newly established state of Pakistan. These three politicians were V.P. Menon, Sardar Patel and most significantly Lord Mountbatten. They made forceful accession of Junagar, the princely state, to Indian dominion. According to the Independence Act of 1947, the princely states were granted the freedom to join either of the dominions, India or Pakistan, or to remain independent. However, Lord Mountbatten had made sure that none of the princely states remain independent. They would choose either to join India or Pakistan. Later, he persuaded the princes to sign the instrument of accession in favor of dominions of India. By contrast, he did nothing for Pakistan, although as crown representative, he owed an equal duty to both dominions. In every disputed case of accession, he threw his weight in favor of India. Junagar was the first state whose government had announced the decision to accede to Pakistan. It actually went through all the legal processes on 15 September 1947. In fact, the state had applied for accession earlier. The Nawab of Junagar sent Mr. Ismail Ibrahmani, his Secretary for Constitutional Affairs to Karachi, who met Qaeda Azam on 12 August 1947 and informed him about the decision of the state. Junagar was a state in Katiawa with 4,017 square miles of territory and 8 lakh population and nearly 300 miles from Karachi. Though its population was Hindu, but the ruler was Muslim, Nawab Mahabad Khan Rasul Khanji, who had freely and voluntarily offered the accession of the state to Pakistan. At this time, the Nawab was in Karachi. In his absence, the Indian government immediately responded with large-scale troop concentration along the borders of Junagar and other states in Katiawa, which had acceded to Pakistan. On 16 September 1947, the day after the accession, the Prime Minister Diwan of Junagar, Sir Shah Nawaz Bhutto, father of late Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto, addressed a letter to the Prime Minister of Pakistan, making an earnest appeal for help by lodging a strong protest with the Indian government to prevent invasion of its areas by providing armed assistance. The Prime Minister of Junagar also protested over the Indian blockade of his state as its supplies were being cut off including food and petrol. The communications of Junagar were threatened on all sides and postal and telegraph services endangered. A bi-weekly air services which Junagar had with Karachi was ordered to be discontinued by India. At this, on 18th September, the Governor-General of Pakistan, Qaeda Azam, sent a telegram to the Governor-General of India, Lord Mountbatten, stating that there were large troops concentration along the border of Junagar and other states in Katiawar, which had acceded to Pakistan. Qaeda Azam made it clear to Mountbatten that any encroachment on Junagar's sovereignty or its territory would amount to hostile act and that in no case Indian Dominion troops acceding to India should violate Junagar territory under any pretext whatsoever. Nevertheless, the Indian government tightened the blockade of Junagar which despite protests from the government of Junagar had driven its people to verge of starvation. The Indian government had already stopped the food, patrol and all communications, mails, telegraphic, telephonic between Junagar state and the outside world in order to starve the state into submission. It refused to recognize Junagar's accession to Pakistan and increased its military and police forces within Junagar's territory which caused a great deal of panic among Junagar's peaceful population. Till 8th November, the Diwan Sir Shah Nawaz remained in touch with Pakistani government informing about what was going on in Junagar. However, on 8th November, Sir Shah Nawaz sent Major Harvey Jones, the senior member of the Junagar State Council, with a letter to Mr. Book, the Indian Regional Commissioner at Rajkot. This letter requested the Government of India to take over the administration of Junagar in order to save the state from complete administrative breakdown. This letter and the behavior of Shah Nawaz Bhutto encouraged the Indian government which promptly occupied Junagar by force. Pakistan protested but in vain as the Indian armed forces equipped with tanks, armored cars and other modern weapons took over the administration of Junagar on 9 November 1947. 
Pakistan's government refused to recognize it, calling it unjustified aggression on Pakistan's territory. Although the Nawab of Junagadh had declared the extension of his state with Pakistan, its Diwan Sir Shah Nawaz Bhutto handed over the administration of the state to India. On 8 November, Sir Shah Nawaz flew to Karachi and told the press that Junagar was still a part of Pakistan and the state only asked the Indian Union to help in the maintenance of law and order. The question arises whether Mr. Bhutto, the Diwan of Junagar, had the right to ask India to help the state in maintenance of its law and order which had already acceded to Pakistan. The government of Pakistan pointed out that the Diwan was not entitled to negotiate settlement since Junagar had lawfully acceded to Pakistan. Therefore, India should withdraw its forces from the state, hand back the administration to the Nawab and refrain from committing act of violence in Junagar. Pakistan lodged a strong protest against India for its direct act of hostility and a breach of international law in Junagar. Kaide Azam wanted to send Pakistani forces to Junagar and assist the state on this crucial question whether Pakistan should render any military assistance to Junagar or reoccupy the state from Indian hood. The British military officers, particularly Vice Admiral Jefford, had played a significant role by following a policy of inactivity towards the state of Junagar. Under these circumstances, the government of Pakistan refrained from sending a single soldier to Junagar. All they could do was to send 7,000 tons of food grains to feed the starving population of Junagar and Munawadar despite the occupation of the latter by the Indian forces. Munawadar was a state in Kathiawar. It was contiguous to Junagar. The Khan of Munawadar had declared its accession with Pakistan by signing an instrument of accession on 24th September 1947. The Indian government, without any notice to Pakistan and without any justification of any kind, took its possession by force on 22nd October 1947. The Muslims there were terrorized by the Indian armed forces and were forced to send a cable to the UN Security Council that the situation in Munawadar was peaceful. They were threatened that their properties would be confiscated if they go to Pakistan. The Maharaja of Jodhpur also expressed his wish to join Pakistan. He was coming to Karachi in order to sign the instrument of accession but was hijacked to Delhi. Mountbatten warned Maharaja by making it clear that from a purely legal standpoint there was no objection to the ruler of Jodhpur acceding to Pakistan, but the Maharaja should consider seriously the consequences of doing so. Regarding to the fact that he himself was a Hindu and his state was populated predominantly by Hindus, Kaide Azam had offered Jodhpur the best terms. Use of Karachi as a free port, free import of arms, supply of grains to famine threatened districts and jurisdiction over the Jodhpur Sindh Hyderabad Railway on the condition that Jodhpur would declare its independence on August 15, 1947 and then join Pakistan. Pakistan in its infancy was faced with innumerable problems, most of which were created by her rival state, India. Amidst these problems, Pakistan was confronted with the issue of accession of Munawadar, Junagadh and Hyderabad and Kashmir. These problems occurred at a time when Pakistan was starting from the scratch. Junagadh, Munawadar and Jodhpur had acceded to Pakistan voluntarily and freely. They had full right to do so as they were entitled to do under the agreed scheme of partition and the Indian Independence Act of 1947. India's military action against these states amounted to a direct attack and aggression against Pakistan which the latter could reply by force. Pakistan, however, refrained from taking military action. The role played by the British officers in both dominions, India and Pakistan, was significant. While British officers in India led by Mountbatten tried their utmost to merge even such states with India which had declared their accession with Pakistan and use military force without any hesitation, their counterparts in Pakistan refrained from adopting countermeasures against Indian unjust actions. It's no secret that the intention of India right from the beginning had been not to let Pakistan survive and therefore conducted such acts of hostility and violence since partition.